Welcome to another episode of Business Every Day. My name is Jonathan Wilms, and today in the studio, a studio that was actually wired up by the very guy who's sitting in front of me, uh, we have an electrician, a gentleman who owns his own company, and we're going to get the whole story of oh, how that came about and everything, but my friend Cody is here to talk about what he does and his business. So, Cody, thank you so much for coming in today, yes, being sir. on the show, and I am excited to see where this conversation leads today. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> My friend, just can you give me the brief summary of who you are, where do you come from, and how did you get into the business of electricity? Well, Cody Buchanan, I'm 44. Well, I will be 45 in September. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> um, I'm an electrician. I've been an electrician for 26 years. 27. Or, yeah, 27 years. Wow. So 27 years. So, that's a lot of years. Yeah. I, I have a few years on this earth. So, more than and, half of your lifetime has been in one industry. Yep. That's impressive. It's, uh, it was hard, but yeah. yeah. It's kind of crazy, like growing up and how, like I, I thought I wanted to do electrical work. Actually, I wanted to be in the army. My dad was in the army, so okay. I thought, man, I could go in there and go gun ho like my dad did, you know, yeah. and yeah. see the world. Really, is what it all boiled down to. Cool. Um, and I was born in Germany, and I wanted to go back to where I was born at. Interesting. I mm -hmm. had no idea. Yep, I was born in Wiesbaden, Germany. So okay. It was kind of cool, but um, I was probably eight years old, nine years old, and I took this alarm clock. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, I just started getting into stereo systems, and like, I don't know, I just wanted to make it louder, my alarm clock. So, of course, I kind of got in trouble <laughs> for this. So, um, there was a couple alarm clocks that, like, uh, my stepdad actually, um, uh, like tore up or something they weren't working i don't he had a whole bunch of alarm clocks for some reason i did not know so <laughs> there's just stacks of alarm clocks. stocks stacks <laughs> okay. honestly so and then uh some speakers like stereo systems because back in the day that you know in the home speakers they didn't have no you know cool little bows you know they right. had humongous tower speakers they took up some space 100 percent. yeah so the um sometimes the receivers quit working so you couldn't mitch mats the the brand, so you had right. all these other speakers. So what I did, I took the alarm clock apart that had a radio in there too. Okay. And I literally hooked up like 20-something speakers to this one little bitty oh alarm gosh. clock. Oh, my gosh. And it was crazy. Um, Hooked them all up. I soldered them, soldered them all together. Nine years old, eight or nine years old. I got in trouble for that because I wasn't supposed to be messing with that stuff. And I just like, uh -huh. mm, this is going to be cool. Burnt my hand, burnt my finger. Yourself, Cody. I did 100% <laughs> a couple times. So then I turned the alarm clock on just to see what it sounded like. And it was crazy. Like you wouldn't think that much sound would come out of the, you know, because little cheap alarm clock, you know? Yeah. It was loud. Oh my. It was like, I don't, I don't know how it was that as loud as it was, but it was kind of cool. And I was like, man, I kind of want to do this. Hmm. So I was telling my buddy about that. Mm -hmm. Um, I was in elementary school. I remember now. So I was in elementary school when we did this. My buddy asked his dad, or told his dad about you know he wanted to build a radio. Well, his dad got him this radio that you could build. He got it from Radio Shack. You could build your own radio. Okay. You know you ever remember I, those? I remember those old kits. You we, had both the the crystal radios from way back. Yep. And then you had the actual kits that had, you had the big transistors and you could solder. Yeah. Transistors. We built this radio. Me and my buddy. His name is Dustin Wright. He's actually a crazy uh, guitarist. He can play any instrument you want. Kind of okay. like you. You know what I mean? Oh, so. Thank you. Um. The whole, I don't know, it's kind of crazy. So, um, we his name was Dustin Wright, but we called him T-Bone. And the reason why we called him T-Bone, because he's a little chunky guy, and my brother's name is Dustin, too. So, not to get him mixed up. He had to have different names. Yeah, his nickname was <laughs> T-Bone, and it stuck. His name still is T-Bone. It's crazy. That's awesome. Yeah, elementary school elementary names, school. guys. That'll get you. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. So, we built this radio, and we we got some, like, Japanese or Korean radio station in. 
Whoa. And it was crazy. We were like, whoa. Like, I mean, it was, and then it was over from then. I was like, man, we tried to build this bicycle with a, uh, put a motor on the bicycle, electric motor, <laughs> but we didn't know how to run the electric motor. We tried to hook up like batteries to it to like run it. And right. I, I don't know. It's just like experimenting with so much, got zapped so many times. Like, <laughs> And it hurt, you know, but. Do your nerves even work at this point that you've been doing this thing for 20 plus years? Um, yes, because my kids get on them all the time. Okay, so, good yeah. answer. Good. Yes, <laughs> yes, they definitely work and they definitely know how to push the button. Okay. So, yep. Okay. So you started with an alarm clock and speakers and somehow that y- you had a goal of doing army that didn't work out, but that somehow led into electricity, being an electrician. What was, what's that part? What's that journey? I've always been a go-getter. Like okay. my family didn't have a lot of money, you know, um, four kids growing up, mm-hmm. my mom and my dad divorced, my mom worked her butt off, you know? So I knew that like the army didn't get paid good money, mm-hmm. but I knew electricians did. Okay. Because they had all the cool cars, and that was ah. the that was the whole thing. Observant. Hey, yeah. look for like, who has the like, stuff. Not, if you want nice stuff, you have to make money. Well, right. I can be an electrician because I put an alarm clock together. This is pretty much what I'm <laughs> like. I got this, you know? So, actually, uh, my stepdad, he did HVAC for this company in Nashville. Okay. And he needed a helper. And I was like, man, that gets my, that's still doing electrical work. Yep. You know, HVAC, you yep. know. So you got some high voltage, you yeah. got some low voltage, you yeah. got the whole the whole scope. Yeah. So um, he asked me if I wanted to come be his helper, and I was like, "Yeah, dude. Like, I'm all about money." And I here's the thing: like, when as far as education goes, and I kicked myself in the butt for not doing this, but I dropped out of school. I dropped out of high school. Okay. I was 17, just turned 17 years old. You were close. Uh, well. Ish, but ish, <laughs> yeah. And I thought, you know what? I could, uh, I planned on getting my GED mm-hmm. when I got out, but I started working. So I, I didn't want, I don't know, it was hard for my mom, you know, because she had, you know, four kids or she whatever. Really hard is like, just go through school. Yeah. Just, I mean, and yeah. we grew up poor, you know, so, and I, I wanted nice stuff. My mom couldn't afford it. She tried everything she could, you know, she did everything she possibly could, but she just, I mean, she couldn't, you know, we did, we just didn't have it. So yeah, I had this high expectation of where I wanted to be in life and where I was, but I knew I had to get into a good trade. I just, I like doing it. Mm-hmm. I, it's probably cause I got zapped too much and it probably, <laughs> it broke something. It, yeah. Something's <laughs> broken there because I still get, I literally got zapped yesterday by the, you know, the, the temporary. And I'm like, yeah, that's what, that's what it feels like. So, cause once you do it for so long, you're like, you don't like getting zapped, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm a little bit older. It hurts, you know. Like, uh huh. Yeah, you end up throwing screwdrivers because you can't stop shaking. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> I got you. Yeah, it was crazy. So, you know, I went and helped my father in law because he uh wanted help or whatever, and I was doing HVAC for about I don't know a year and a half, yeah, or maybe two years, and I was going to go to school mm-hmm. to be a, a technician. Yeah. But they needed somebody on the electrical side of the company because they did HVAC and electrical. And I was like, man, I'll do it. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, I had good work ethic. And they, the actual guy's name was Bill Piercy. He's awesome. Awesome dude. Um, He requested me come help him. And I was like, man, yeah, I'm I'm down. I want to learn. This guy knew his stuff. Mm-hmm. I knew I'd learn good. Yeah, or like a good teacher. So I'd, I would learn a lot. So... It's incredible how far you can get just when you show up on time and are willing to work. That's the key. Like, like you can get far. Like we, we don't even have to get into like you don't need this certificate or this education or this exposure or have the best affluence. It's a willingness to learn, right, to right, better yourself. I mean, that's been probably the biggest thing on in these conversations. Is people are just like you know if you just show up, talk to people, and be transparent and and help solve problems like. There's nothing you can't accomplish or do, and your income possibilities are are endless. Yeah, one hundred percent. So they recruited you into the electrical side of the HVAC company. Yep. And then was that an apprentice program? No, it was a. 
job or like hands on experience. I've never went through the apprentice program or technically I've never went through the apprentice program, but okay. It's more hands on for me. Yeah. Um I'm not very like I can't st- study good you know i wasn't never good in school mm-hmm. i could take tests i could do all the stuff but this the i get uh overwhelmed mm. with stuff not that i w- like didn't like to read or no, you know nothing like that it was yeah. just like it was boring to me i'm more of a hands-on kind of person so yep i i can relate to that and i believe 100 percent you can i i know a whole bunch of electricians that went through the the prince program's awesome mm-hmm you could you could learn all the stuff from all these books and do all this stuff, but you get out on the job in the field, mm-hmm. and you don't know what you do. Like there's so many different scenarios mm-hmm. that they don't teach you right. that you will not le- you can't you can't learn besides hands on. Absolutely, and and that's not isolated to the electrical industry. Yeah, it's that's everything. Everything is like okay, yes, there's the technical book way of doing this thing, but. Nobody does it that way. Everybody Nobody. does it like yeah. this or like this, or it's way more efficient and way smarter. Way easier because you know step thirteen that the book's not accounting for always has to get done. Yep. And so we're going to take care of that at step two. Like mm-hmm. it's just yeah, that's just so relatable in most every industry. Yep. It, it was crazy. Like the literally the first week of being an electrician, mm-hmm. we were in Cookville, or I think it was yeah Cookville, Tennessee. We were, uh, it was like a super Walmart that was there, but they moved out and they, or it was a Walmart that was there and they built a new super Walmart. So okay. Goodwill, Goodwill was putting a store there. Got it. So it was like one of the biggest Goodwill stores in Tennessee at the time, like that, you know, a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. So my foreman at the time, he was working in a 40 volt panel mm-hmm. and I'm standing, you know, two foot away from him and he's like literally in front of the panel I was off to the side. Well, he got electrocuted. No. He got blown back 12 foot. And, I mean, he's he's fine. Like, 100%. He's fine. Golly. Yeah, but yeah he grounded himself out. That's what Ooh. he did. So, and it came out his elbow. Like, went through his hand. He's working on this panel. Came out his elbow and blew him back oh 12 foot. And I'm gosh. like, freaking out. I was like, man, I, I'm still young. I'm like, seven, 18 years old. And I was like. Man, I don't know if I want to do this no more. Right. You know, I mean, he was fine, one hundred percent, but that'll bring reality into check real fast. Yeah, it was scary. Like that's the first time I ever got zapped too, like two seventy seven volt. Like that stuff hurt. Like mm-hmm. it hurt, hurts. <laughs> like one twenty volt, it hurts. You know what I mean? It grabs you, but <laughs> it's the piss off voltage. One hundred percent. Two two hundred plus. That's that's ouch. It hurts. Like. All day long. Like, <laughs> it hurts. And I'm like, once again, I think it was, a, like, right before he was working on the panel, I got zapped, then he got zapped. Like, just call it a day and be like, let's regroup. Well, I, th- I think we did. Like, that, mm. I mean, he, he, he was dedicated, though, so he came back the next day. We literally went to the hotel room right after that. He had, wow. he scarred on his elbow. And it's kind of crazy. I'll tell you a story about that. Wow. It's, That's. I was his boss, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, I went went to another company, uh, like for, you know, way down the road or right, whatever. Right. And uh, he was was working for you. He worked for me. <laughs> That's it, incredible. it was crazy. It was crazy. I was like, dang, dude. Like, yeah. I mean, it was kind of it was cool. How long did you stay in that learning position with your first? So it's an HVAC company. You're learning about electricity. You're you're on the electrical side of this company, and you're going out. You're doing jobs. You're you're learning about panels and wire and codes and stuff like that. Like, how long do you do that as a job? Like, as far as like being a helper, yeah. like learning. Yeah. I mean, what was your progression? You were a helper. You were learning or training or whatever you want to call it. it it's crazy because. How long I lived here? Um, I don't know, maybe three or four years. And then I moved to Colorado. Okay. But when I worked here, it was more of like, all right, you run this wire here. You bend this pipe this way. You go, you do run it from A to B. Mm-hmm. Just I just did what I was told. Yep. Not knowing the theory behind anything. So, mm-hmm. and I thought I was the bomb.com. So I got to Colorado. <laughs> okay. And them dudes did not play. Like, I went in there, and it was, I couldn't find a job, like, because uh, I just moved from Tennessee, and they were like, 
some hillbilly dudes up here trying to get it, you know, right. talking funny, you know, yep. compared to them. And even though my family's there and I worked in my grandpa's body shop for a little bit, but I was like, man, I want to get in the trade. Well, this company, you know, they, I went in there, you know, showed them my experience. I had four years experience doing this and uh, I didn't have much residential and they were mostly a residential, but they okay. did like custom home stuff. So, and like Castle Rock and Monument and Denver and Colorado Springs. So, I went in there and I was like, man, I could, I could run with the best one. Well, I could not. <laughs> so the, my foreman at the time was like, um, I talked so much crap. Like, man, I, sna- I snatched the hell out some wire. It's like what mm-hmm. it was, you know? And I got made fun of still to this day. It's crazy. And he's the head over all electrical inspectors <laughs> in Colorado today. Like he, he and he, he talks so much crap. So oh, that's amazing. But it's humbling. Like hmm. you think, like you're the man. And I thought I was, I went in there cocky and I was not, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I honestly learned like the theories, like the, like how everything worked. Okay. The the why, why I did it, how I did it, how did I get to here? Right. Like, why is it from A to B and not just like run it from A to B? Like, how does it, why did you think that was important to know why? Like, I, I, my experience of even doing, I mean, I was in HVAC for a couple of years and things like that. And so many guys that I was exposed to are more of just like, I'm just going to do, you know, get in there, get it done, do my 40, and then hit the weekend hard and whatever, whatever. Like, the, my exposure hasn't been that there are many people out there who even care about why it works. And, and the why people end up becoming the troubleshooting people and the foremans and the thing. Like, there's a difference in mm-hmm. mindset between a doer and a a person who actually wants to understand. Like, what? Wh- why were you different? Well, I, I think it's because I've always been intrigued by it. Mm. Just curiosity of how things curiosity. work. Curiosity, yeah. Like, and I wanted, I wanted to know how. Like, I wanted. Well, at first, it was just to prove that I could do it because yeah, my foreman at the time was like, man, they're... he told the owner of the company, said, man, this dude ain't going to last. Like, <laughs> and they were fast. Like, they had okay. like three guys would wire a 3,000 square foot house in one day, every single day. Like, every day we do a house, a house, a house, a house, a house. So, right. And I come in and I slowed them down. So, mm. I was like, it was more to prove a point. Okay part of it but i think i think for the i don't i mean that was definitely part of it it was more like an ego thing but it was um ego gets us some places it can also take us some wrong places but it can take us some good places oh it de- yeah <laughs> oh i know uh, yeah <laughs> excuse me like yeah i know so um like deep down inside like i've always was has been fascinated mm-hmm. by the electrical Okay. Or like, and how things work. Like I've always, like for one, um, you know, we didn't have money. So if I broke something on my bicycle, I had to fix it myself. Right. Right. There was no other option. There's none. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No other, other option. So it's, um, I mean, that's a whole, that, that, that phrase necessity is the author of invention or, you know, it's like, it, it's not that I wanted to learn about how to work on cars. I wanted to drive. Yeah, and you had to. But I yeah. had to. Yeah. There was no money there. There was there was just I I had to learn by whatever means and sometimes the car was unsafe to drive, but I learned to fix it so yeah. that I could do it. <laughs> it it was a uh, at, at first it was like a a cocky thing, you know, mm-hmm. to like where I wanted to do it. But then I like I had a baby already, you know. Mm-hmm. Like I had a newborn son. Yeah. Like he was born in November. We moved to Colorado and like almost a year later. So he was a year old and I'm like, dang, man, to provide. kids are expensive. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, man, how, how am I going to provide for that? Well, I can't provide for them if I don't, or for him, if I don't know what I'm doing, mm. you know, I'm not going to be a job hopper. I've never been like that. So it's like, I want to better myself to better my family. Yeah. Your sense of responsibility is very high. And I was young, man. Like, Michael was born. I was 19 years old. Wow. It was crazy. But I've always, I've never been like a crazy person. I mean, I hung, I, well, I'll take that back. I have been a crazy person. <laughs> but, like, it was more of, I was more responsible. Right. I wasn't, well, I was stupid too. Well, 
was a responsibly stupid person. There are so, levels yeah. and grades to stupid and crazy, and it's we can even be around certain environments and not participate. But I mean, like there there's a difference. Yeah, there, it, there are degrees. It's always been like that, and it was always been for the better. And here's the thing too, like I'm the baby of the family. Mm-hmm. There's four of us. Mm-hmm. I have an older brother and then a set of twins in between us. Okay, and their life, like. I did not want to work at McDonald's or like a, I mean, I would, I'd do whatever I had to do to provide. And actually I worked at Sonic for two weeks, but there you go. Yeah. So that's, a, I, I mean, it's crazy, but I saw, and they're older. So I saw like, Hey, why are you working there when you can learn a trade? Hmm. And I knew then like, all right, it's, it's like a, not even a status symbol, like something you could build a life. You can't, I mean, I guess you could build a life and people do, you know, not, I'm not putting down nobody, but like working at fast food or, you know, not having a trade, you know, cause you know, Dave Thomas started somewhere. You know what I mean? Well, You can build a life doing anything, but there's also like the, just the genuine results of different industries like the demand for fast food at a certain dollar amount is only so much there's a limit there there is a limit yeah like like, but there's also like you start talking about electrical or any other trade and you're like wait a minute there are levels within levels and and you could be like well i'm going to do this residential i'm going to do it here or i'm going to do a big mansion or i'm going to do it industrial or i'm going to do it like there are so many different levels even within yeah, the different sex of the different industry or, or the, the, the expanse of the industry that you could be like, your possibilities are endless. Yeah. It, it was, and you uh, knew that at 19, 20 years old. I did. That's awesome. Well, I fell into it. It, it like it, I got lucky. I think is what it is because like nowadays, you have to have an education. You have to graduate high school. You have to get your GED. And I always told myself, like, I'm going to get my GED. And mm-hmm. it's cr- it's crazy because I never did. Okay. No. And I, 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 I still don't have it. Yeah. But I told myself, like, you know, me and the boys' mom didn't work out. So I'm trying to be the best dad I can. But how can I be a good dad and tell my kids stay in school? You have to stay in school mm. because I know that it's not like it was when I was in school. But how am I going to tell them to do something that I did not do? Mm-hmm. You know, so I was like, you're trying to lead by example. Yeah, you got a good job, a good career. So my whole goal was before Aaron, my youngest graduated, I would get my GED. Mm-hmm. And I, I still didn't. But I promise you, I'm going to. I don't need it. Like, I'm, I'm just. I love it. I'm going to. <laughs> I love it. Whenever we do like episode 200 or something, yeah. we'll get you back on and we'll be like, we're going to do a graduation I, party. I finally got my G- <laughs> GD, yeah. you know, but um, I for me, it was like, um, I, well, I had a family and I knew like the, the price of how much I made more money doing construction and construction was going crazy. Mm-hmm. I'm scared of heights, <laughs> I, and, but I, and I always have been, but not as bad as I am now, but I, I feel like I could not climb on a, a roof and do framing right? because I'm scared of heights and I'll probably fall because right. I'm clumsy. So mm-hmm. I couldn't do that. I didn't want to do plumbing because it could be pretty nasty. Yep. Because even job. if, even if literally, <laughs> if, if you could, if you do new construction, you're eventually going to have to do old construction too. So yeah, even fixing your stuff, that's, it's, it's crappy. At some point, it's going to leak. It's going to break. 100%. It's going to... I didn't want to do that. Yeah. So, and I already had HVAC, but I was like, man, I don't want to deal with insulation. Mm. That was a big thing, like, because you got to insulate some of the ductwork, you know? It hurts. It Yeah, it's annoying. It just, it rubbed, it's a thousand cuts type deal. Yeah. Like, it's just like abrasive and... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah been there. And mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? Let's go work. Easy. Easy enough, you know? Yeah. And you can see the... I don't know, like looking at all the cool lights and even back then, like it's so far advanced now, it's cr- anything you can think of. They, they make, you know, but even back then, like all the cool designs, like of the lights and like, how do they work? Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, to me, it was 
crazy since I was little, you know, like, yeah, I don't know what it's called, but you know, the static thing, you put your hand on it, the static, oh, yeah, yeah, the static yeah, yeah, thing yeah, yeah. or whatever. I was like, and that's cool, but that's electricity. Hmm. Like, I mean, huh. Nikolai Tesla, I've always liked him. Even then. Yeah. Like, I was like, man, that dude is, that dude got it going on, but yeah, that's a whole nother. Yeah. That's we, so cool that something about this interest has been with you for the majority of your entire life yep. that has actually you're one of the few that i have experienced where what you were interested in as a very young person has actually turned into a lifestyle and a career and a business yeah. like that's awesome that whether you knew it and or not or if it was intentional or not like something about that thread of intrigue and and discovery of something new and all the cool creative lights and how does it work and like that is maintained throughout all the years that that's really special i like it man yeah like i'm trying to teach my kids that too yeah and i mean they both went other routes mm -hmm. but they keep coming back too okay i was like huh it's in their blood you know what it, i mean it's, like it's it, in it, the it, genes yeah it's, it, it's there they got it you know so so how'd you go from Colorado residential to owning your own business? Like that's that feels like a big jump. Well, it is, and here's it's crazy. Okay, so when I moved to Colorado, uh -huh. I lived there eleven years. Okay, eleven. Yeah, my family is. I still have family there. So yeah, yeah, they're from there. In the eleven years time, I got a seventeen and a half dollar raise. Whoa! In eleven years. And it's crazy. That's incredible. 100%. And I'm like, man, there's crazy money. And wiring houses. Now, we did some commercial stuff too, you know. Yeah. But for me, I've always been high sprung. Like, I probably should have took some ADHD, Adderall or something <laughs> back when I was younger because I'm always like a squirrel. They didn't have that yet. They it's didn't. Okay. Yeah. So I was like a squirrel. So I'm like, and residential, you have to be fast in order to make money. You have to be fast because you really do have to do that house a day or every two yeah. days or something like that to yeah. make your money. Uh, yeah. And it's, I, I like it. Like the, the challenge of, I was like, oh, we got to get this done. We've got to get this done. Got to get this done. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of crazy. Even like I challenge my boys all the time. Like, all right, if you guys can beat me, like pulling this or this. Right. And I want them to. That's the whole thing. Right. Like I'll give you guys a hundred dollar bill or something stupid. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And if, yes, it's to get the job done, but it's to like motivate them. Mm hmm. And They've tried, mm -hmm. and I, I'm not going to let them win. Like, <laughs> my goal is not to let them win. Right. Like, if they won, of course, I'd give them the $100, you know, $100 bill, but I, I want them to be that that guy that's like, man, that old man ain't going to beat me. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because I was that. Like, right. we used to, you know, race all the time, did all the stuff. Well, Anyway, I'm getting too far ahead. You're so, okay. You're okay. like, when I was in Colorado and I got a seventeen and a half dollar raise, so my foreman, who's yeah. the head over the state of Colorado, all electrical, all electrical inspectors, good boss to have, awesome. Um, he's he's like, man, you have it in you. He said, but you suck. So, <laughs> yeah, he said, we're gonna. <laughs> We're going to work it out. We're going to, I'm going to teach you how to do it. And he taught me all the ins and outs, the easiest way. Like I had to learn his way. And as soon as I got good doing it his way, I was tweaking it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like, like, all right. He's like, man, you're learning, you know, a different way. And I'm faster at it. So, but every, every day at lunch, we would have code questions. Okay. So, and he would, he's like, you got to get your license. He said, you have to get your license. In Colorado, it's weird because you got to have your, um, if you are doing any electrical work mm -hmm. and you're an apprentice, you have to be registered with the state. Okay. And you have to, to get your license, you have to be an apprentice for two years mm -hmm. to get your residential wireman. Okay. No, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Four years to get, no, no, it is two years. Yeah, it was two years. Two years to get your residential wireman's. Okay. You got to have your residential wireman's for two years plus a year of planning mm -hmm. to get your journeyman. Yep. When you have your journeyman, you have to have your journeyman for four years mm -hmm. plus planning and uh, project development before you get your master. 
workers. Right. So there's a process, and it's awesome because— Are most of the companies out there unionized? No. Okay, so it's independent, but it's just a lot of regulation. I mean, there's union contact, right, right, right. contractors wherever you go. just a lot go. of regulation of this is the process and how you do it. Yeah. Okay. Which is good because you don't have them like fly by electricians if there's a storm or something comes through there. They, right. Companies come in. You know, you have to be registered with the state. So mm-hmm. that's kind of cool. But his name's Shelby Erickson. And that dude would um, ask me all these questions and like time frames. And I wanted to get my license. So, like, and it was, I mean, I took that test like four times hmm. for the residential wireman. So that was easy. It's an open book test. And it sounds so easy, like, oh, it's an open book test or whatever. <laughs> it's not as easy as it seems. Right. So, I was never good at taking tests. So, I'm I, not either. I could totally. And it's open book and you have a time limit. You know, you know, I play guitar. Like, I just, this totally has nothing to yeah. do with the podcast. Like, I, I, have, I took a, my one music class that I ever took. It was open book, had the guitar on my lap. I failed that exam. It was just like, how do you form this chord? And I'm like, I hey, you do it like this. Yeah. Open book, had the guitar, still failed. Oh, man. <laughs> it's... The, the teacher passed me because they knew that I could actually play. But like. <laughs> yeah. You're like. Hmm. It, it, it I was, get it. Yeah. It was a. Uh, it was kind of uh, nerve wracking, honestly, because you're like, man, I, like. And he, he told me, he's like, dude, you, you literally do everything. Mm-hmm. That you just don't have that piece of paper. Mm-hmm. It's like you know how you just can't show it yet. Like you, you just not on paper. Like you can yeah. do it. Yeah. So, and I didn't make the money, and it was crazy because I had the company vehicle. Hmm. I had the helpers. Yep. We were helpers. Yep. Because in Colorado, you could have people work underneath you. Mm-hmm. A master, you could have so many different people. You didn't have to have your license on the job. You just got to work under a license. A the license owner, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, because you didn't have that certificate, even though you're doing literally every single thing a licensed electrician's doing. The paper means money. Paper means money. So, when I got my residential wireman's, I was like, you got a cool jacket. Oh. It was like a letter jacket. <laughs> I mean, it was cool. And it had the company name on the back with your name sewed in there. You were somebody. You know what I mean? I was like, huh. He's got his pay for. Yeah. And a $500 bonus and a $5 raise. Whoa. That's not insignificant. Yeah. Even was, today. Yeah. So it was like, dang, it's an incentive, you know? Mm-hmm. Took the test. I finally passed the thing. Then it took me forever to get my journeyman. It was like a whole process or sure. whatever to get my master's. Yep. So I loved what I did. And it's crazy because when I when I did commercial, I still like doing residential. Mm-hmm. I could I like doing it all. But for me, because I'm like a squirrel, residential, you work faster, you can make more money. Okay. That's By volume. Bread, that's your bread and butter. Bread and butter. Okay. Like, and you could teach a monkey to pull wire. Mm-hmm. You could teach a monkey to put plugs on. Here's the holes. Here's the two wires. Let's yeah, let's go. There's yeah. ground. Let's yeah. go. You could teach anybody to do it. Mm-hmm. But it's crazy how many people are scared of electricity. And like when I when I've been doing it for so long, I'm like, when you know somebody calls me with a service call or something, I'm like, just. I tell them how to do it over the phone. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you can do this yourself. Don't pay nobody to do that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you're wasting your money. Just, just do it. One because, I mean, I, I don't, I can't charge. I don't know how many times I came to people's house and hit the reset button on a GFI, right. and I tried to tell them to do it. I'm like, oh, I did that. You know, I'm like, no, you didn't. Mm-hmm. You didn't push hard enough. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. So, anyway, I, I got my ma- I finally got my master's right. Wow. So. Okay, master electrician out yes. of Colorado. Yeah. Me and the boys' mom didn't make it out, didn't, you know, make it or whatever. Yeah. She's from Tennessee. Um, She moved back here. I couldn't expect her to live in Colorado. You know, all her family's here. My right. family's there. And um, I was like, you know what? Like, all right, I'll go back. But the the whole plan was like, when I came back here, like my boss was going to um, I work there two weeks. He said like, man, I'll pay you. To stay here. Oh, so you were going to do just a co- major commute deal. Yeah, and he would have paid me, and then would have paid for me to take the company vehicles down here, work there two weeks, come here a week, work there two weeks, come here a week, work there yeah. two weeks. But I would not do it because the two weeks I was away from my kids, mm-hmm. if something happened, I wouldn't be able to 
like forgive myself. Like, I, and they're still young, you know. So it was like, yeah, and you're 16 hours away or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. like wow. flying 16 hours away. So, yeah. like, wow, as fast as car go, pretty much. I mean, so you are here in Tennessee because your kids. 100. percent But it was crazy when I came back here. Um, I had to start all over again. Tennessee does not honor right Colorado's license, which is crazy, because the test here is a joke. <laughs> compared to there like it it really is so um i when i got here but it, the test is different like in here you can have uh your license like your residential license or whatever but you could still you could work like mm-hmm. you could open you up start your, day one you could open up your own company and it's not a practical it's you don't have a practical test you don't have nothing and there's no letter of time like in colorado you have to have documented hours on the job mm. before you can take your test. Okay. Here, you get somebody out of high school, go take the test, and you pass. And you're an electrician. Wow. I mean, I can see pros and cons to both. I mean, you get the the hillbilly who doesn't know anything who's out there, you know, flinging circuits. But I, I guess from a cost of entry and a barrier, like if you if you know what you're doing, you don't have to be education smart to get into the industry so i can see a benefit there but also like everybody is out there flinging wire and competition and hey my my buddy joe says that he'll he can come do this whole whole house for 350 dollars it's like well joe doesn't know squat (laughs) and if they yeah if they are not licensed insured there's a reason if they can't pull a permit there's a reason why they can't because they don't have a license or they're not License, bond is insured, insured. And all that. Yeah, yeah. So don't ever do that. Don't ever. <laughs> yeah. Note to our to our listeners: don't do that. <laughs> yeah, because there's a reason why they don't have her license. Yeah, and that's I mean you're taking a risk. Not saying that. And here's the thing too: like I know actual electricians who are better electricians than I am. I just have a piece of paper. Mm-hmm. They can't get the piece of paper. They can't take tests to save their life. Mm-hmm. But they are definitely better electricians than me. But when it comes down to the business aspect of it. Even though they can wire the house, if something was to happen, yeah, or, and it burns down, it's on you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. so they're always going to be at best a number two. They have to work for somebody who has paper. Yeah, if they, if you have to pull a permit for your electrician, a homeowner's permit, then be it, scared. Yeah, one hundred percent. So I'm going to jump ahead a little yeah, bit, yeah, yeah. So, um, just to, to get through the narrative. So you you came back to Tennessee. You started from scratch. You're working for a company, and this is some, I guess, just insider details. I know you do that for a while, but what I don't know is that that transition from you working for a company to you striking out on your own, and I'm going to take a stab at, I assume that was that you were doing side gigs and helping friends out that at some point you're like, I'm, I'm actually making decent money at this. Maybe I could do it on my own, but I want to not assume and just assume, like, what was that transition process okay, for you? It's, it's a little bit more simpler than that. Okay. Okay. I did like a whole bunch of side jobs, yep. made crazy money. Yep. But for me, my ex wife, I paid a lot of money in child support and I she she got me. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I, yeah. she took fifty four percent of my income, all this stuff. So I was not I had to do side jobs to survive. Okay. So it was a little bit more complex than that. But I did not want to open up my company until my youngest son was 18 years old and out of school. Okay. Because if Strategy. I would yes, if I would have opened, and I, I planned on it. Okay. But I, she, she's not who she was then. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's night and day, you know, but, yeah. um, if I made a million dollars, she would have took it. Right. So it's more out of spitefulness, like <laughs> we are. We all start with something, and yes. we, we grow from there. So, uh, I mean, I wanted to start my company, but I knew if I did at that time, that I'd be working for her. It's an additional fifty percent tax bill. Yeah. Um, I don't know all the nuances and the stories, and I don't need to. But just from a practical conversation yes. standpoint, it's just like it's really hard to stop start a company if you know that fifty percent of your revenue is going to be out the door from the start. Yeah, and usually companies that start their revenues are very slim margin. One hundred percent. So that that just 
is not survivable. So from a business standpoint, that sounds really, really smart and strategic and yeah, acceptable. It's a, a lesson learned more than, yeah. Boys are grown. Yep. They turn 18. Yep. How quickly after that does Buchanan Electric, is that right? Yep. Buchanan Electric come into being. Um, really fast. So I had a buddy. I worked, well, I worked for this guy. He's a state electrical inspector now, but he wasn't at the time. Okay. And um, he's an awesome guy. Mm-hmm. But I had a friend from high school that opened up his own company, and he just started. And I was like, "Man, I'm a." He needed some help. Okay. And I was like, "I'm a, like, I'll help you start your company. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. know that I'm going to start my company too. Okay. You know, like I'll help you get his your, electrical company construction. His ele- yeah, okay, his electrical, electrical company. Company. Uh, and I help you get your. You, you know, get you going or whatever. I've known him because we wired the hospital together. That's, you know, went to high school together right, or middle right, right. school together and met back up at long time friend. Up. Yeah. A yeah, long time friend. So, um, worked for him for a little bit and I was, I was doing so much, you know what I mean? And I learned a lot from him, even though we're not close now, like mm-hmm. it, it's crazy, but, um, I learned a lot of the do's and don'ts. Got it. Cause I was more, I was helping with the bidding on the jobs and it was like bid commercial jobs, you know, mm-hmm. like bidding on it. I saw what money's coming in. I know what he was paying out, mm-hmm. you know? So I was like, huh, you went to business school. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, man, that's, I mean, it's pretty awesome. Like learning from somebody else's mistake mm-hmm. to where like, all right, not what to do and what to do or what not to do, you know? Right. So, right. I worked for him for a couple of years and then youngest turned 18 and I was like, all right, I'll stay with you as long as you need me to. But I got my license here in Tennessee. Yep. I got my, I got insurance. Mm-hmm. I got everything I needed to have. Yep. Open up Buchanan Electric. Okay. And he was kind of butthurt about the whole thing. And he's like, you know, but it's the plan. That that was the plan from the get go. Right, right, right. But he's doing awesome now. You know what I mean. So it's not like there's no hard feelings. It didn't on my crash part. and burn. Or yeah, anything. yeah. No, no, no. So, so when you when you, I, I'm asking every person who comes on the show yeah. this question, when you first start your business, my experience is that we just Google how to start a business, or and and some website comes up and says, okay, you need to start, you need to have this type of legal formation and you need to do this tax status and stuff like that so like buchanan electric is it a sole proprietorship an llc an lp are you an s corp a c corp like what are you llc it's an llc okay and the reason why Mm -hmm. i love that you have a reason okay because (laughs) we've had multiple guests on the show that don't have a reason (laughs) okay the reason why it's an llc because um i don't know if this is right or wrong but if something was to ever happen yep they could sue Buchanan Electric. They yep. can't sue me. Yep. Legal protection. Legal protection. Yep. That's pretty much all it is. That's the reason it exists. So yeah. I mean it's a it's a wonderful the legit reason why is for distributions of revenue and also for the legal veil of protection. Yep. And as long as we operate as the legal entity, you know, I am Cody on behalf of Buchanan Electric, or I'm Jonathan on behalf of business every day or whatever, then we keep that corporate veil and it's not penetrable by the legal process. Yep. So, yeah. So that's how that's how I did it. But I got I got a little help because yeah, my wife owns a salon. Okay. She had her salon before me, mm-hmm. so she knows she helped like like who who to get in contact with. It's right. totally different. We have different insurance companies. Like like we are. She has Verizon. I have AT and T. Okay. So it's like. Oh, Separate. I was so interested in, like, I would love to have you guys on together and have the conversation of, like, do you do business together? Like, nope. how do you build this empire, well, like, and not be in conflict with each other? Well, and- it's crazy because she has different ideas, and I'm like, Rachel, you literally cut hair. You dye hair. Mm-hmm. Like, you are, you own a salon. Like, mm-hmm. it, it don't work like that. She's like, well, you just do it this way. I'm like, look. Just, just trust me. You can't do it that way. Yeah. So, there, and she's a very, very, like, 
bullheaded, I guess. We love you, Rachel. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> she's awesome. And I am too. When it comes... So do you guys collaborate on your business venture at all? Or do you just like cheer each other on, but they're two totally separate entities? It's two totally separate entities. Okay. Um, We definitely cheer each other on. Yeah. She's been in business nine years. Okay. Ten years. I don't know. Nine or ten years. Mm-hmm. And uh, she knows the do's and don'ts. You know, who, who to talk to. Yeah. How to get the business name. How to, like... Right. All the how tos. I have a business account. I need to talk to an HR person. Yeah. I need to talk to CPA. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. who to talk to. Yep. So that was cool. Like having having that experience. And my buddy, who I actually work for, who's a state electrical inspector, is the one that told me to get an LLC. It's a great advice. Yeah. yeah. He said that way they can't mm-hmm. they can't do nothing. You know they can't. You know. And his whole business. I mean, I do stuff totally different than he does because. Mm-hmm. I like my blood pressure being low. Yes. And um, it hasn't been here lately, but I mean, <laughs> like, I like the calmness of it. And he told me a whole bunch of um, experiences of what to and what not mm. to do. So it's kind of cool having somebody that will actually be real with you and tell you right, like what to do and what not to do. Well, my experience is like nobody who actually has a real company, there's all those social media fake companies yeah. or whatever, whatever, but those who actually have a real company, nobody does it by themselves. It's a collaborative conversation. It's ask this person, hey, what do you do? What's the best practice? What software do you use? What's your, who's your tax guy? Who's your legal guy? Like it's all based out of relationship. And, and, and if we're not, my experience has been that if you, if you can't relationship, you can't do business. 100%. Like, even talking to a client or a customer or something like that, if you cannot have communication and be able to build rapport with another individual, you're, you're really never going to be successful in creating a business because there's just, that's what all business is based off of, is some sort of relationship with somebody yep. or some entity or some company or, like, even if it's Susie at the reception and you're just ordering things. Like, Susie's going to process that order much faster and more effectively if you have a good rapport yeah yeah so yeah that's cool that you kind of had that guide both from your wife and then from this this buddy here's the kicker where's the kicker all right so i don't know what to charge okay so i when i started my company i was like all right i'll make x amount of money and i work for a very well known i was their maintenance electrician Uh uh-huh when i first started it was me and my oldest son. So, okay. or no, my oldest son came in after the fact, but because he was still in high school. So, okay. um, start with this company. I ain't gonna name the company. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, I wasn't paying myself what I should have got paid. I wasn't charging what I should have got charged. Okay. And I let them dictate that. So when I talk to other electricians, mm-hmm. because like if I'm not out to, I will never take nobody's work. I'm I'm not out to stab somebody in the back you know like it was hard because i didn't know what to charge Mm -hmm. i didn't know what the going rate was i know what i wanted per hour Mm -hmm. which was so far below than what the normal person was i didn't know what to like i was so it was crazy because starting a business like i didn't take in consideration you gotta pay tax a lot a lot of taxes you like a lot a lot (laughs) yeah self-employment tax is no joke yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and then you bring money home and you have to pay taxes again. Yeah. You pay taxes on taxes on taxes on taxes. <laughs> Better not die. You'll get taxed for it. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> the death tax. But it, it was, it was a very humbling experience having to ask what other electricians, what are we charging? What is the going rate? Mm. You know? So, yeah. It didn't work out with that company, mm-hmm. but it was, it's kind of a, it was crazy because when I found out, like, man, I, I'm not going to be able to make it paying taxes. I'll, I'm literally making $100 a week mm-hmm. after, like, paying everything. Right, right. I, I mean, can't. that's the thing with starting entrepreneurs and stuff like that is usually you are putting in 
I mean, you're probably working 100 plus hours a oh, week. Every bit of it. Because not only are you doing the job, you're bidding the jobs. You're going home and doing billing and paperwork and invoicing and talking to supply houses and building relationships and trying to figure out these jobs. And like, you're making $2.50 an hour. It's really a 24 hour <laughs> job because you dream about the job. You wake <laughs> up you're like in the middle of the night, like, dang, like, I should have done this. I should have done that. You literally dream about everything. Like, you're right. like, all right, it's a 24 hour thing. Like so anybody who thinks that entrepreneurship is the easy life. No, it is so hard. <laughs> like so hard. Like you got to have grit. What, yeah. Yeah. You, you have to have the, the drive to, to do it. You know? mm-hmm. So the first, the first company I worked for or like at, when I was on my own, didn't work out. So yeah, yeah. my real good friend, electrical inspector, he gave my name to a builder who's been around Clarksville for a very long time. Okay. And uh, I was like, man, and I asked the builder, which is stupid probably, like, what's the going rate to wire your houses? You know? Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, well, this person charges this, this, this. And I was like, all right, cool. Well, I'll charge that too. It's just where we'll start. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not what they charged. It was the whole thing. I was like, how, is the, how are they charging that? And... So it's making way, any money. It's way less than... Oh, yeah. I mean, they're trying to, you know, build houses and do all this stuff, you mm-hmm. know, to where they make the less money they have in it, the more money they make in the end. You know what I mean? It's... Absolutely. It's business, you know? Yep. So, for about three years, or two years, actually. No. Two years, I'm making nothing, pretty much. And I'm oh. stupid. I'm stupid. Dude, I almost lost it. Like, I almost lost everything. And it's because of me, myself. Like, my own stupid thing. Yep, yep, yep. You get these checks that you think are huge, and you're like, man. But, you know, you get to pay out your materials. You have to do all that stuff. And I was. So, I get, like, and I was doing it stupidly. I just get big old checks, and I'm like, man, this is awesome. You know, like. 50,000 isn't 50,000. No, it's not. It's like. 150 bucks. uh, (laughs) Yes. it, It really, it really is. So. You have all the, and I was wiring some apartments for him, and that's what got me. I have a real good friend. He's an awesome dude. Um, two years in, he's like, have you been checking the, like, material prices? And I'm like, no, nah, why? He said, and he sent me a list of a breakdown. He literally, to the wire nut, to the screw on a, you know, 2,000 square foot house. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God. I This is why I'm not, I'm not able to survive. Yeah. Like, and I wasn't like, it was crazy. Mm. Like I literally had $300 Mm -hmm. or no, it was like, no, no, it wasn't. It was like $600 after material. That's not markup. That's not nothing. That's just strictly just material. I had $600 afterwards for roughing and trim out. It takes a day to wire the house, a day to trim it out. And I have oh my gosh. three guys and they're, yeah, you're making nothing. I'm losing money. Yeah. Like literally losing money. So I come to those builders like, look, <laughs> I show them like, Hey, this is how much material costs. And you don't do that. Like I'm honest to a fault. Yeah. And I probably shouldn't be like that when it comes to, you know, the builder, like, Hey, this is how much I'm buying the material for. Show them the receipt, how much I pay for this material. This is how much. The trim out costs, how long it takes yeah. me to do it, and the rough end. And they're like, well, that's what your price you gave me. And I'm like, that's literally what you told me to pay, you know? And I'm stupid mm-hmm. about the whole thing, so I, I didn't. I never went back to recheck. 100%. It's my own fault. So yeah. I, it was hard. It's like a learning experience. Like, you, I stumbled. Like, and I, it was, it was hard. That's was, a hard stumble, two or three years. That's a big stumble. That's like. Wow. Almost. <laughs> Like, most people don't survive that in a business. No. <laughs> yeah. It took me a year to get back up. Okay. It, it's crazy at the time. Okay. Praying for for change, but I, what I was praying for wasn't the right thing. And here's the thing. I wasn't even a Christian then. Mm-hmm. But I'm praying to God that because I believe in God, Hey, if it works, I, it works, right? Because I, I had to, yeah, I was like, well, you know. Maybe this will work. Yeah, maybe this will work. 
but it, it it's crazy. What literally saved everything to where like that was a rude awakening. Yeah. Like almost losing everything. So yeah. Regrouped, like buckled down, like, all right, this is what I'm I'm gonna have to charge. And then I got a builder. Mm-hmm. Same guy that showed me the material prices, he was gonna go on his own, start building houses. So okay. he g- gave me his the information to his builder. It's like call him, but don't tell him you talk to me. And I'm like, all right, I, I I'm not gonna lie if the guy asked me because right. I, I never I've withheld information. But if you ask me, I'm gonna tell you exactly 100. Like, right. I'm not gonna lie. So I called the guy and mm-hmm. I was like, hey man, you know I heard you're looking for an electrician. You know this is and my buddy was like, this is what you charge. Mm-hmm. You're gonna make money doing it this way. And I was like. Which is crazy because it was like so much more than I was charging before. I'm like, dang, you're gonna, you are gonna make him alone. So I called him and he's like, how'd you get my number? How'd you know? I was like, well, uh huh. Your electrician gave me, you know, he's my friend, and he's like, he said, well, ironically, he left. He said, I'll try you out on this one house. I told him how much it cost or whatever. He's like, we'll try him out, and I killed it, dude. Like oh. I busted my butt, and I've, I've been there ever since. But it, yeah, yeah, it's crazy, like. It's not all pinwheels and sombreros when you go in there. It's not all butterflies mm. and singing pretty little birds. You know what I mean? It's hard. It's hard work. It's And you have to stay on it because right. if you don't stay on it, you're, you're going to lose. And if you're going to lose, I mean, mm-hmm. you don't want to lose. Your goal is to make money. Right. Your goal is to be profitable. Mm-hmm. But don't be, like, scamming people. You know what I mean? There's so right. many flyby people that, like, Half work, but double charge. One hundred percent. I'm they like, grab the cheapest product material out there to try and save a buck, and not yeah. being honest about where they're getting material. And one hundred percent. Oh, that's it's a nasty business. Yeah, and I'm I, I'm probably should not be as honest as I am, but like, I don't want I don't want to be treated like that either. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So like, if I feel like you know, treat others like you want to be treated, that's legit. Like, yeah, people do honor it though yeah. because they know, like, hey. When I call Cody, I'm going to get a no BS answer and be like, hey, man, can we do it for this price? And be like, yes or no. Yeah. And that's a good reputation to have in business. Like, I mean, yes, there are those people within different industries that will take advantage of that honesty. They will. Yeah. And probably have. But it's yep. um, the the long game. If we marathon this this idea of business or life and not just think about a sprint or something like that, I think it's way better of a policy and of a life heart position to be like, no, my policy is transparency and honesty. And yes, I let's recognize that I am in this to make money. I am in this to make a living for my family, to leave a legacy for my children. Like that is my goal, but that doesn't mean you have to lose and I have to win. Like we both can win here. You get a good product, you get good service, good communication. You make money when you sell your product. I make money when I sell you my product. Yeah. It doesn't have to be lose lose. It can be win win. Yep. And I always say, you know, communication for me is the biggest thing within business. That if I agree, if you can communicate with people and just be transparent or be honest, like deadlines don't mean as much to me as the transparency of progress. Like if you tell me, Hey, it's going to be done on Friday, but then it actually is going to be Monday. If you call me, we can work that out. Yeah. Like if if this is the reason why yeah, it's not going to be done. Like supply house didn't have the last spool of wire. We're we're just, we're going to be short. We're going to do this thing. This is how we're going to do it. And this is the time frame. Whereas I come in on Monday and I do an inspection and then you're like, Hey, yeah, man, it's not in a supply house fault. Like, that that just doesn't fly. Here's the thing. You got to own up to everything too. Mm. So like, and that's, here's the thing. Like I've never been the one to pawn it off on anybody else. So like in the business, everything about business too. So like if I mess up, mm-hmm. it's on me, man. Yep. Like I'm not going to put the blame on nobody else or nothing like that. And it, it's, that's just good business. Like, Hey man, like you just said, like communication, honesty, like, Hey, I messed up. I did not call this in when it should have been called in. It was, but it was done. But I, I mean, I spaced it out. I'm sorry. Yep. Like this is, you know, I call it in. Mm-hmm. You got to make it right. It's uncomfortable. It's but... that's the hardest. Part. That, that's one of the hardest. <laughs> like humbling yourself. Like dang. Like no, I did. You know, I didn't do it. I did it wrong. I did. Yeah. And I'm, I'm human. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I mess up too. I've been doing it for so long. But yeah, once again, if anybody ever told you they know what. 
everything they're lying. Don't listen to them. Yeah. And you probably should not use that. So. Yeah. How are you currently cultivating your business sense? Like you've had a lot of input from people. You've had, you know, good help and bad help and you've had advice and you have your wife and you guys are doing this thing, you know, at, in collaboration with it. Cause I'm sure you guys talk about like, Hey, I'm doing this and I'm doing this. And they're like, Oh, that's a stupid idea. You shouldn't do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like, how are you cultivating greater business sense? Um, there's like, cause you're having to go from, you're an electrician, but you're also a business owner. Those are totally different jobs. It's trial. Yeah. Trial. Experimentation. It's very, okay. yeah. So it's like, it's pretty much learning from your mistakes. Okay. Or you're not. You <laughs> or know you're what I mean? not growing. <laughs> or you're not growing. You know what I mean? Like, there's so, it, like, you, it's a learning process. Mm -hmm. Like, and it, it's, it's always changing. Like, yeah. Like in my field, there's so many different new technologies coming out, and you have to be part of it. Like, you have mm. to grow with it. You have to grow with the field because if you don't grow with the field and you're stuck in the old, like, old old school way, like knob and tube and like mm -hmm. really old stuff, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. back in not, my day, yeah, back in my day stuff. No, that's like, and you have to be willing to learn, mm -hmm. yeah, and you you have to be be willing to um take other people's advice. Always be teachable, one hundred percent, even from the apprentice who just started. Mm -hmm. If they have a better idea, praise them for it. Like, dude, that's that's a great idea. I don't know why I've never thought about that, but we're gonna do it that way from now on. Like, yeah, yeah awesome, good deal. So it's um, it's pretty much learning from your mistakes and others. Like, once you get in the trade and you get a reputation going, and like, right. um, your name is out there. Mm. Like, and that's the best form of adver. I don't advertise. I wear t-shirts. I got t-shirts made. For my guys, so they don't tear up their t-shirts. Right, right. You know, and it's crazy because they wear purple and I wear pink. <laughs> I didn't. They don't have no pink ones. I'm the only one that has pink ones. There so. you go. And my wife, of course. But so, so you're at a point where you do not advertise. You nope. don't. You don't acquire clients, but from word of mouth. Yep. That's incredible. You are what six years into business, mm -hmm. and you only do it word of mouth. Yep. That's called a incredible reputation. Well, I don't know about all that, but it's, it's, well, I, I would say so. I'm very, very humbled about stuff. You know what I mean? So it's, um, but I take pride in what I do. Yeah. And you could tell from the work yep. that I do. And I take pride in what my guys do because mm -hmm. when it all comes down to it, my name's on it. Yep. Now, granted, my kids have the same last name and they work for the company, but my Cody Buchanan is on the paperwork is my business. I am yep. reliable. If anything happens, it's it's on me, yep. not them. So yep, you just you got to take pride in it, and so that's what I try to teach them too. Like, hey man, like it may take a little bit longer to do it this way, but it looks so much better. Mm. You know what I mean? Who cares if it gets covered up with drywall? It's going to be in your head. Like, hey, if one day, thirty years down the road, mm -hmm. somebody opens up that wall. You got to be prideful of what you do. Everything you do, yep. you, you have to take pride in it. If you're going to flip burgers, you better be the best burger flipper. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I've, I mean I rent, the, the house that we're in, I, I renovated so much of it. And just like pulling down the walls, there there are some walls where you pull down and you're like, oh gosh, the guy who did this was a jack wagon. Spider webs. Yeah. Like, and then, you know, I, I was in the process of a basement remodel and you came in and you wired up my basement remodel um and it's incredible like you just look at the lines and how it all comes back into the panel and like it's freaking good work yeah but you look at it now you can't see it but you know it's there i know it's that's there. the whole thing yeah like it, you gotta take pride in what you do yeah and it's crazy how much better you'll feel about your job how much you want to do your job and how people like that's another thing you have other people come check out your work like mm -hmm. builders like you know, even though those other builders did not work out, mm -hmm. they don't have nothing wrong, bad to say about me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like, besides money, you know, I charge more. Well, yeah, stuff happens. <laughs> like, that's, it's inflation. A, it's it's like, the definition of integrity. It's like, 100%. What are, what are yeah. you doing behind closed doors that if revealed, you would be like, ah, oh, cringe. It's like, no, no, no. 
I mean, everything that you do is behind closed doors because everything's behind drywall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Well, to the point. So when you do commercial, it's well, conduit's it's exposed. Yeah, that's right. It's the same thing. Like, <coughs> excuse me. Like, if, if you're working in commercial or industrial, mm -hmm. you see it. Yeah. You can't make it look like crap. I mean, yeah, it works, but. I don't know. I've been in some places where you're just like, oh my goodness, who was that person? They were obviously high. 100%. <laughs> high drunkard. Not theirs. Or you, or you can see where they were sober, and that's when it gets all wonky, and then you're like, oh, they, they got they got a hit. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, it's straight. Yeah, it's so many. Yeah, it, it's crazy. But um, when you got to just take, I mean, that's all it is. Take pride in what you do. Mm -hmm. No matter what you do, no matter if you flip burgers or you wash cars or you sweep floors, yeah, you have to be prideful in what you do. So what's the goal? Like you've built this company and, um, but why? Like, what do you, what's your target? What is the dream? Like if, if Cody could think 10, 15, 20 years out of like, why you're putting in the work and the labor and you don't have to, you could either sell the company. You could, you know, hire a, a a manager to come in, and you could sit at home and do paperwork and just build that side of things. Like you have options at this point within yeah. your your company. Like, why do you do what you do? And it's a, it's a legacy. Like, I want to build something that I could be yeah handed down from generations. You know what I mean? Like, okay. My grandpa is a prime example when I refer to him about so much stuff. That dude is the hardest working man I ever met in my life. Mm. He was 76 years old, still in the body shop. Now, this guy is a little bitty. Okay. Like, I'm 240 pounds. Uh huh. He's probably 175 pounds, 165 pounds. Okay. I got big old hands. Mm hmm. My grandpa, to this day, or. Well, not now because he passed away. But like when he's seventy six years old, his hands were huge, and he was scrawny. But like his working man hands, like if you shake somebody's hand who is a um, a body man or like says they're a body man, says they're an electrician, and I don't, I don't know. It's like a manly. I, I don't know. It's it's kind of a. We communicate when we shake hands. 100%. Like, you, you can feel hard work. You 100%. You can feel almost, almost integrity as well. Like, 100%. Like, you just like, mm, that was flaky, flaky hand. I don't know that. I trust that guy. Yeah, and that, that's the thing, too. Well, my grandpa that owned the body shop or whatever, like, he worked with his hands all day mm -hmm. long. So, mm -hmm. like, and he's a, it's crazy. Like, I don't know anybody that beat him in mercy, even when his 70s. And I'm, like, young, <laughs> dumb, and that dude could beat you, but... He always wanted to like leave something down and he tried to get me and my cousin to take over the company business and do all this stuff. But, uh, my cousin was a drafting engineer actually. Okay. He's now an electrician by the way. Hey, he was my helper for four years. That's was, cool. Yeah. It was for four years or whatever, but, um, in Colorado. So, um, he, my grandpa wanted to pass something down. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, cars is my passion too, which is it's crazy. Like why I'm not a body man, you yeah. know what I mean, or work with cars because I that's literally what I love to do. Mm -hmm. Just like I've had sixty six cars in my life, and wow. that's that's just cars. That's not counting motorcycles and stuff. Like it's it's just yeah, I don't have that many now. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. just like get them and just it's see in them. the blood. Like, it's, it's in, just, yeah. yeah. You know what? That's probably electricity too. So like it's like building something and seeing what it can be afterwards. Hmm. So like when you wire something, man, there's nothing there. Then when it's done, like it all works, it comes together. Like it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a puzzle like magic. So, um, it's, I want to leave something for my kids, my grandkids, like, um, something they could look back on. And I, I literally work every single day. Not so much now. I mean, I do. Like, I actually worked. It was crazy hot and muggy and stuff <laughs> today. But I know you're out there. You're yeah. doing the stuff. You're not sitting at home in a nice, cool office or no. truck. You're no. out there pulling yeah. and wiring. Now, there's days I don't. And, it's like, when work's slow, Yeah. if I go in there and help them, and my kids know that now, like, all right, you want me to come in there and show you how it's done? Well, guess what? We're off work early, and you're not getting paid. Mm. 
So I want, I want, and it's, it's not arrogance. It's actually love. 100%. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I want them to take over the company. Hmm. It's Buchanan Electric for a reason. I wanted to do Buchanan and Sons. God's honest truth, but I didn't want somebody to make fun of BS Electric. <laughs> so that's why it's not Buchanan and Sons. That's that's incredible. That's, that's oh man. That's and <laughs> for so long, and it was funny because I think that can just be the nickname. My <laughs> yeah yeah my my I think it was my best friend that was like. You're going to name it BS Electric? I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm not. I was like, dang, dude. Like, you, you just, just ruined it for me. my thunder. So now it's Buchanan Electric. Buchanan so, Electric. And it's crazy because my brother, who's a Buchanan, my two sons, Buchanan, like, they work work for me. So it is a family business. Yeah. So That's it, cool. My grandkids are going to work for me. Not my granddaughter. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because. She could do whatever she wants. Yeah, yeah. Know? But my grandsons, I have three of them. They're going to. They're coming up in the family business. If they want to. Yeah. Or if not, then, you know, I'm not going to hand them anything. No. I have been guilty of doing that, you know, to to an extent. You know what I mean? Cause I came from nothing. I don't want them to live like. You know, there's. That, I had to, but that there, I mean, there's a line. Yeah. yeah. Between like, I can now be a help, but. I don't want to hurt them or enable them, but I also don't want them to experience all the crazy hard things that I did. And yep. Where's that balance? Yep. You'll, I mean, just like running a business, running a family, yeah. you're going to do some things really, really well, and you're going to do some things not well, and you're going to learn along the way and take people's advice. And like, it's it's a journey, a process. Yeah. And you're in it. And yeah. that's really cool that it like even like I hear from your story, like even as a young person, very young person, this legacy component was there of man admiring what your grandpa was doing and that being an intrigue and a pull and then taking that like, man, even from a young age of like, I'm going to do something for the long term, even like building these alarm clocks and, you know, coming like all yeah. the way. Like it's a part of who you are are this this legacy component and that's really special like i one of the questions that i grapple with is when someone builds a company or is talking about building a company it's like are you doing it for money are you doing it for family are you doing it for prestige or like what is the reason in the core of what you're doing what you're doing and i think it's a little bit of all that though it is but there's always a dominant driver and from this conversation, it doesn't feel like it's not prestige. Mm. It's not your social media influence. Yeah, it's of, yeah. <laughs> far from that. Yeah, it, yeah. It's it's not to build the largest revenue generating company. It's to build Buchanan Electric, a family company, and that's special. Like I think we we make different decisions as as business owners depending on our primary directive. Yeah. And and one of the components that you've mentioned through this entire conversation is that honest and integrity that you hold personally. Well, your brand, your company holds that as a value, which then, you know, your your sons can perpetuate they could damage it, but they could perpetuate yeah. it. And to be able to hand them something is like, hey, this name, Buchanan. It means something. It means something. Yeah not only in the industry, but in this community. And so like, it's like, when you call this company, people know that it means this, this, and this, and this. It doesn't mean cheap. It doesn't mean lie. It doesn't mean that, no, no. It means responsive. It means quality. It means, like, that's what it means. Yeah. And to be able to pass, build that and then pass it on, that's incredible. That's it's, that, really cool. It's crazy. Like, I I had my, my aunt ask me one time. She's like, um, pretty much like you do, like, why did you why did you wait so long to open your company? And I'm like, Well, really? And you know, the There's some practicals. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's yeah, some practicals yeah. behind it. I was like, but it's more of like the fear of failure. Mm. You know, like the fear and not knowing. Right. Like not knowing if if it'll last or um because you see a lot of companies that they come and they go. They come and they go. And when I open up my account at the supply house, 
the lady, I, I've been like, I, I work for different companies. We all use the same supply house, you know, so sure. they knew me there. So when I opened it up, she was like, she gave me advice. She was like, pay your taxes, mm-hmm. pay your bills on your bills on time. She said, cause 99% of the time companies will fail in the first three years mm. of, and it was crazy because the aha moments a couple years in, you know, and I yeah. was like, Oh, like, and it's kind of flash, like, she's huh, right. 100%. So you, yeah, you, you see all this money coming in, but you still like, they're, you're stupid with it. Like, well, we start seeing big dollars, especially if it's the first time. It was, it was like, and you're like, I could do this and I could get that car and I can do this experience. It's like winning and, the lottery, you know what yeah, I mean? And then like, you're blowing it all. And I'm you're just like, making phone calls and making money. Yeah. And then you didn't realize that the government actually had 30% of it. And, yeah. And then they're like, hey, hey, where's my money? It's April. And you're like, ah, that was three cars ago. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> and you're like, all right, so you you got to you gotta learn from your mistake. Mm. And it's it's crazy because um, the people I entrust, I had a really good accountant. He was an awesome dude. Awesome, awesome. I ain't going to mention his name because I don't want to, you know what yeah. I mean? But um, God loving, just an awesome dude. And this is crazy to me. So I'm new to this whole, doing the whole business thing, doing taxes and stuff yep. like that. So I didn't have an account or I didn't have an accountant. So I didn't know how to break it down. You know, Rachel uses QuickBooks. Yeah. I don't. I use, I'm old school, a piece of paper and I'm computer dumb when it comes to stuff like that, you know? So I'm like, <laughs> all right, piece of paper. So what I would, what I did is I took the, um, my bank statements mm -hmm. like the end of the year and the accountant said, all right, I need, the breakdowns, you know, because like ten ninety nine, my guys. Okay, and um, that's a whole other aspect to yeah, stuff yeah, or yeah. whatever. You but, could uh, dub two ten ninety nine. They're different things. One hundred percent. So are different things. So I, I had to break down everything. Yeah. Or you said like, give me a list of your, your uh, profit losses. You know, all the stuff, and I'm mm -hmm. like, what is that? Like, mm. oh, so I don't know what that is. And he's like, what you made, what went out, supplies, and I was like, yep. all right, cool. So what I did, I got my bank statement for the whole year. Oh, you went every long way about it. I did. I did. So, <laughs> but here's the cool thing. Um, for me to write down every, where every last red cent went, mm. like I wanted to know what I spent money on, like, and I broke it down to food, you know, supplies, right, um, right, right. right vehicles like every single thing mm -hmm. and you realize how much money you blew how much mm -hmm. money you could have saved and where all your money's going it's not just a big humongous check with all this money and all this stuff you know like yeah you make good money on paper yeah yeah but where's it at it's a humbling experience i mean 100 most people don't even do that with their personal budgets it's crazy. You know what's crazy? The craziest thing? So I brought him this list. Okay. It took me a week. God. After, after work, I literally went through every single month. I was like. That's why right. nobody does business. <laughs> it's it's hard. It like, But it's crazy. I, for me, I personally want to see where every red yep. cent's going. Yep. Yep. You know, and if eventually I'll, I'll probably, I don't have QuickBooks now. <laughs> you know, what I, mean? I, I don't. I still break it down like that. Because I like being able to see where every single red cent was. Mm -hmm. And it's easier for me on paper, like, okay, fuel. I spent a lot of money in fuel because I got, like, three company vehicles. Yep. A lot of maintenance, a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff. your trucks are big. Yeah, so. <laughs> You're not driving around a Prius. <laughs> no. The anti-Prius. That's what, right, that's yeah. right. So, breaking it down and all that stuff. Well, I brought him this list, and he was like, he looked at me funny, and he was like, what are you doing? And I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm doing it. I, th I thought what you told me to do. He's like, you were literally doing my job. Right. He said, you are the only person that I've ever said something to that literally brought down every single red cent. Mm -hmm. He's like, I know where everything went. He said, I don't have to look up nothing. I wrote it on a piece of paper, like fuel, you know, uh, Michael's income, like mm -hmm. literally every single, all my employees, income, all the categories, every single thing. Everything. And he was like, you literally doing my job. I was like, well, it's because I'm scared. I don't know what to do. You <laughs> told me what to do. So like, 
like you know what I'm doing, and he actually helped me out. I, I don't know. It's like a um, another business aspect that I did not know that. I mean, yeah, it'd be easier with QuickBooks. Like I'm sure. So like, maybe it itemizes everything anyway in QuickBooks. And Rachel tries to get me to do it. And I'm like, look, no, I'm good. And I don't know if it's because it's, it's not like I'm a, a tight water or nothing. Because I mean, I'll give it all away. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I don't care about the money aspect about it. Mm-hmm. To me, it's like I can make a dollar every day. Yeah. Like, and I'll do what I have to do to make a dollar. Yeah. You know what I mean? Nothing le- illegal, but like I will, you know, I'll work at McDonald's. I'll I'll be a door greeter. Like it's, whatever it's a it totally takes. Different, it's like the principle of the matter is, I'm going to provide. One hundred percent. I'm going to provide for me and my family the best that I can. Whatever that means. Yeah. Whatever. D- yeah. If that means hot legally. and sweaty, yeah, legally, legally, uh, of course, yeah, absolutely, yeah. legally, not <laughs> not illegally. That's for a different show. Yeah, is it, yeah. <laughs> this, There'll be this no is, names given this during is that all show. Legal, yeah. but yeah. Any, everything within my power legally yeah. to do. Like I'm going to provide for me and my family, and in your case, it's you and your immediate family and your sons and their families, and like like there's a lot at stake. But you are out there grinding and putting like I'm going to get hot and sweaty today. Because that's what's required. You know what's crazy, though? Okay. So I went in this, you know the details, but I went through, um, which I'm not going to get into, I went through this point in my life where Mm -hmm. I hit rock bottom. Yep. Around the same time. Yep. So everything was falling apart. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't even, like, I want to say it, but I'm not going to give details. It's just rock bottom. Yeah, rock bottom. Okay, so. Business is down. Everything's hard. Everything's falling apart. Yeah. Work slowing down. All the stuff, like. I left one company, go next one. Like it just, everything was falling apart, right, you know? Right, so right, right. I literally owe everything I have because I am a Christian and I believe 100% that I would not be where I'm at now yeah. without God in my life. Amen. And it, it's crazy. It's not crazy. It's real. But like thinking like back, like it's still work. Like you still have to work. You still have to do all the stuff, but like with everything's fell into place, like, mm. All right. Yes, you almost lost the company. Yes, you almost ran this company to the ground mm-hmm. because of you see all this money, you're not doing it right, and you're, you're like humbling yourself. But right, right, right. Um, I found God, flipped my life around, and like I'm profitable now. Hmm. I don't worry about getting paid. I do in my mind. Like I'm like, there's days like you know I, I worry about getting paid because sometimes like the payment thing it it varies like yeah you're working with construction pay schedules are different yes 30 days 60 days 90 days and you still owe money for material and, and you have labor. money going out yeah so you're you, always you, putting out before you get <laughs> yes 100 percent. and there's times that you don't get paid and you have to figure out what you're going to do right to, to pay your employees and do all this stuff so that's where you learn how to manage your money better to like mm-hmm. run your business better mm-hmm. the feeling you had when you could not pay your bills yep because you were stupid with your money you're mm-hmm. like yeah buying stuff you should not have bought mm-hmm. you know uh, um it's just crazy how everything turned around like and it would i would not be where i'm at without god in my life 100 percent, and i believe that wholeheartedly and i'm i'm like a newborn so i'm still learning which is cool because i'm still learning in the business thing but i'm making money yeah like i see i can see it like and i'm getting jobs that are like I would have never, ever thought that I'd get, you know what I mean? Mm. And it's like... Opportunities. 100%. Just, and it's scary. Like, it's scary because the the potential loss is, like, unfathomable. But the gain you can get, too, is, like, unfathomable, too. Like, Well, and there's a there's a biblical principle. It's, it's called the principle of the talents. And and there's a, the whole story in the in the New Testament about, like... The, you know, a, a wealthy manager, you know, gives his his servant one coin, and the next guy five coins, and the next guy ten coins, and, and and then he comes back in a year and says, what have you done with it? And he's, you know, the one who just turns it into two, or the one who five into ten, ten into twenty, like, there's a reward based upon what was given, and there's, there's a biblical principle around this idea called reaping, or sowing and reaping, and, like, when you can be trusted, when the Lord can trust you, with a hundred dollars like and you can manage that well and you're not being greedy but you're willing to to give and ask where is this best served and how is my company going to be honoring to the lord and it's like he can then give you a thousand dollars 
he can give you 10,000, he can give you 100,000 because it becomes less of a thought because this is who I am. Yeah. Like for for me and my family, like we have decided we're we're a tithing family. And so it was like it doesn't matter. I've just been doing it for so long with a different different amounts of money in my life that it's like I don't care if it's $100 or a hundred thousand dollars, like ten yeah. percent. I'm I'm giving to my local church because that's what I have feel conviction for and what I've decided yeah. to do. You know, walk your out your own journey or whatever. But like, that's it's a muscle reflex now. Mm-hmm. And same thing with you know taking care of your employees and like I know you like you take your guys out for lunch and then you you know you you treat them well and you have fun and you, you it's not just hard work. Yeah, there's a lot of benefit to it and there's something very honoring around not being this greedy miser extracting every 10 scrooge cents. yeah being scrooge yeah. yeah yeah and being able to walk through life especially with money open-handedly is that there's something there mm-hmm. there's just something there around the the sowing and reaping principles of like you take care of people and you're gonna be taken care of well here's the thing too that i'm i'm learning to this day okay so i, I make decent money i give a lot of it away mm-hmm but I, I feel like well, I'm questioning it now. You know, like, not that I'm giving it away because I'm going to be the brokest one in the graveyard. Mm-hmm. I'm going with nothing. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care. Like, I'm not hoarding money. I'm not doing nothing like that. So my thing is, like, am I giving to the right person? Mm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we go out to eat. I, I tip well. Yeah. Like crazy. Yeah. We order food, like DoorDash, me and Rachel always, it's just me and Rachel. And I usually cook. She can cook, but I can cook better. And she knows that, <laughs> you know. Let and the record show. <laughs> she knows that. She will, she will testify to that. That's amazing. True. Yeah. Like I love cooking. So, and it, it, you know what it is? It's like, it's crazy because it's, I love the whole family thing. Like I love providing. Yeah. That's, that's the whole thing. So before, like it was, um, Okay, when I, I made good money when I opened my company and I was able to buy stuff, it's like, well, look what I can buy. Mm. You know, look what look what I got. It's more like a status thing. You know what I mean? Right, right. Flash it off. Yeah, dude. flashy. Like, no, I don't care. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And when, when I tip, it used to be like, and I didn't even tip like I do now. Like, mm-hmm. it's crazy. I didn't, you get a $20 order of something and you tip $10. Mm-hmm. I tip double. Yeah. Like, whatever. We order from the same place, and I like their food, and that's who we mostly order from. And the you know the bill's like fifty six dollars or something. Yeah, it's fifty six or fifty three dollars every single time. Okay, <laughs> I give a hundred dollar bill, mm-hmm. or like, and then they deliver it. You know what I mean? But and they know they love coming to my house, and it's not like for anything. Like I just love like being able to do that. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's not like I don't care if anybody knows. You know what I mean? Like. Mm-hmm. Like when I I give stuff away, don't don't tell people where it came where it came from. Right. Like I don't care. I don't care about the the glory. When before I'm like, no, I I gave that to you. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, like here's a t shirt and a poster. Yeah, Buchanan. Yeah, <laughs> represent. Like, you know, it, it's for a whole another reason. So it it it's I don't know. It, it's so good. Like so good feeling. Like we need more business owners like you. Well, I'm sure they're out there. You know, I, there's no way that I'm I'm the only one. You're you know not what I mean? Only but, one, but man, there's the the culture of um of greed is very pervasive, and it's unfortunate and sad. And that's generally, at least in the Western mindset, that's what we we praise is someone who can create a lot and then keep it. And it's not very well displayed or taught or even praised where we go like, man, my win is our win. It's not that someone says like, oh, well, you deserve to help me out because you, no, 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 not deserve, but out of a heart of, of love and generosity to be able to share with family and friends, like the success that I've been able to, to walk in is, that's a unique thing. But the thing is, you get taken advantage of. And I have. But here's the thing though. I, is it right or wrong? Because I feel like I have been, but it's not going to change who I am. Mm-hmm. Like, I know they're taking advantage of me, but am I helping them out? Of course I am. Mm-hmm. So are you really getting taken advantage? Yeah, they could honestly go do work on their own. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just because they're lazy and you, you're you working. You know what I mean? But it still don't change who I am. Yep. 
they can they can change. You know what I mean? Personal if they don't responsibility wanna, is a big thing. One hundred percent. So I'm, yeah. I'm, but there you have to be. You can't be taken advantage of. Yeah. Well, that's that's parenting, right? Parenting. Yes. It, it's, it's that idea of like, well, child, you need to brush your teeth. Well, I don't want it. Well, okay, this isn't really a a matter of whether you want it or not. It's good for you. Yeah. It it's you know it's good for you to bathe. It's good for you to sleep at night. It's mm-hmm. good for you. You know the things that we don't want when we're acting childish. We we don't want the things that are good for us. But there there is a point like my parents having me do chores. My parents having me do this or that turn me into who I am today where I can be self actualizing and work hard and show up when I need to show up and like. It gives me a sense of pride now where I can be like, no, no, no. I do those things. I do those things well, and people know that I do those things well. Like, like there, there is a point where being not enabling is the most loving thing that we can do. And that's really, really hard, especially when we can. Yeah. It's like, ah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's hard, man. It, it is. It, it, it is. But someone is considering to get into the electrical business. You, you've been doing this for a very, very long time. Um, is there anything, I'm 18, thinking about getting into the electrical industry, and I say, Cody, what's it really like? Is it worth doing? What kind of money can I make? Like, is, is this worthwhile endeavor to, to like, just throw my heart and soul into? Is, like, is it worth it? Is it not worth it? Like, what would you tell me if I was considering following in your footsteps? Okay, if it was, if you, if it's something you want to do. Mm-hmm. I think so, maybe. Well, yes, there's money that could be made. Okay. The sky is the limit. Okay. It depends on how you, I mean, you could work as hard as you, you could work seven days a week. You could work 10 hour days, 12 hour days, 16 hour. We've worked 16 hour days before. Whoa. Yeah, like, because you have to. Yeah. Sometimes you, that rough end just needs it. Sometimes you, you, and you line yourself up. So, um, and your schedule don't work out the way you need to. So you have to <laughs> actually break down. Yes. <laughs> right. you, like you're stuck there anyway. Yep. Might as yep, well work. Yep. So, um, there, it's crazy. Like when I work for somebody, the amount of money difference that is involved. Okay. I've been in the trade for a long time. I made good money. I made crazy money in Colorado when I, when the money wasn't even like, you know, t- 20 years ago, I made crazy money. Mm-hmm. I was stupid with it. But I still made, you know, crazy right, money. Right, right. But the, when I came here and had to start all over mm-hmm. and had to prove myself again, mm-hmm. and it was a whole nother, whole nother ball game, but it was more of, I came back here because of my kids. Right. You know, so right. Um, the, the money aspect of everything, yes, like you can make so much money, the sky's the limit, it depends on how much you want, if you're going to work for it, like. Do you, can you give me a range of, I, I know everybody's yeah. definition of subjective, what good money is, um, but can you kind of range this for me? If we're talking about, like, I don't know if you guys do hourly or by day or whatever. Okay. Hourly rate, like um, start starting off. Okay. I don't know how to. I know that's a hard. It's, it is. It's, it it's is. almost job specific who you work for. It's like, it's kind of specific, but I, I know like in my industry that I still work in, in the networking field, yeah. like generally speaking, People that have some, you know, have some college or whatever, you're going to start off making, you know, 25 to 35 an hour. Yeah. Somewhere in that range. Mm-hmm. It's like, yes, there are the outliers where you can go work for Geek Squad at Best Buy and make 1850 yeah. or whatever. But generally speaking, if you work for a corporation, you're going to be somewhere in that 25 to 35 range. It's, it's okay. So, like, starting out as an electrician, $17 an hour. Okay. As, Shock yourself, folks, for seventeen an hour. Yes, <laughs> but you're gonna have to earn that. You know what I mean? So, like when I started, I made six twenty five an hour. Yeah. Then I moved to Colorado, started off at I don't know what the ending rate. I know I got a seventeen and a half dollar raise in eleven years. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. and it was crazy the price difference. You know the, and that was you know. 15, 16 years ago. Yeah. You know, and then so, as you hit those different licensing points, then you just, it bumps and bumps yeah, and bumps. Yeah. But once you get your, your, uh, like once you open up your own company, the, the price difference or the, the, how much you make per hour is unlimited. So, well, starting out is like 17 bucks an hour. Yeah. You're going to work for it. And depending on the, co- I work for companies, you're, you're $17 an hour. Mm-hmm. Are you $21 an hour? 
that's your max. It yeah. just it depends on who you work for. Right. You know, so like if you're doing commercial it's crazy to me because commercial rate is um you get paid more per hour and it's slower paced, but I don't I don't think you can't make you make more money doing residential. Because My personal experience because you can't volume, do the hours? Volume. Right. Right, right, right. Okay. So at like Okay, when you start doing side jobs, or like when you get into the trade, you make yeah. seventeen bucks an hour. You're like, hey, your your friend's mom's like, hey, I need to hang the ceiling fan, <laughs> you know, and like I was like, all right, you know, you're like hundred bucks, and she's like, oh, that's cheap, you know what I mean? Like, and you're like, oh, I mean, hundred, uh, yeah, that's the hardest <laughs> part, like learning when what, they say yes too fast, <laughs> yeah, or you know, fifty bucks, and you know, they're like, oh, that's cheap because it's normally one hundred twenty five or one hundred fifty, you know mm. what I mean? And you're like. It's a hundred dollars to bring the van to the, your door and then the service call. One hundred percent, right? So, um, yeah, seventeen bucks an hour. Um, usually working for I take care of my guys though. Yeah, yeah. But there's French benefits, you know. For me, it's like lunch. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, absolutely. Company vehicles. Or, they get pay for fuel, pay for yeah, like everything. You know, like yeah, the there, nuance goes on and on and on. Yeah. I get that, so, but, but like, if we're talking generally speaking, like. Twenty dollars an hour, you know, thirty five thousand dollars a year or whatever yeah. that is. Like that's for for a learnable trade to have a starting off wage of something that's competitive in the market yeah. that, you know, I, I guess it's debatable in twenty twenty four whether or not it's a livable wage, but the yeah. the you know, within all the inflation stuff, it's it's really expensive out there. Yeah. But that's incredible to be like hey, start now. I'm coming out of high school and I'm gonna work my butt off. But there's opportunity. Yeah. That's really awesome. I actually pay a 16-year-old boy that works for me. Mm -hmm. I know his mama. He's out of school. You know, the school starts back up in the 7th or something or 8th yeah, yeah. or something like that. He's $13 an hour. Okay. I pick him up every day. He work, I buy him lunch. I'm teaching him. Free education plus Free education. Wage. Yeah. You know what his mom told me? Like... You should pay him, you know, eight, nine bucks an hour or whatever. Cause nobody's going to hire him. You know what I mean? Right. But, and pick him up every day. You know what I mean? So I'm teaching, and he's like, I think he's going to do good. Yeah. But I told him, he's 16 years old. I said, dude, but when you're 18 years old, you can make him 40, 45 bucks an hour. Right. And doing your own thing. Right. Like, you can make crazy money in, mm -hmm. in the trade. It all depends on who you work for. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing you got people that, like business owners that charge, or let's just put it this way. I charge $75 per man mm -hmm. per hour, mm -hmm. even the $12 an hour guy. Right. Well, you have, I mean, you think but business expensive. Uh, you have expenses, a lot of expenses. Like taxes, you know, and uh, insurance and stuff. Insurance and bonding and quotes and all the but work. But it's that you not that much. Right. When you, when you put it down on paper, Owning your own company is so much better. So, like fake little bunny ears, but it, like it's it's so much better as potentially money. So the literally the sky is the limit on how much money you want to make. It's how much you put in. You have the freedom to choose instead of it being dictated for you. You make like, your own time too. Yep. That's the whole being your own boss. Like, yep. like man, I'm not feeling good. But now it, it all changes when you have people working for you. Right. So I mean, and you can become a slave to your own company when you set it up in a way where you don't have training or you don't have people who are responsible, and then you're like, well, if I if I'm ill one day, I'm not bidding jobs, I'm not out there, you know, giving quotes, I'm not out there doing the stuff that generates the jobs and the revenue and keeps everybody working. But um, there's always the danger there too when you're a solopreneur and you're the man. Yeah, you know, you break your leg, and everybody's hurting. Yeah. Um, so that I can see the fear there as well, but the, like you said, the sky's the limit. Where you could, you also have the opportunity to choose your your guys' rates. It's like, yeah. man, I really want to treat them well, just because I care. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm going to set them at this rate, and I don't have to. I could just absorb that. Yeah, but I can. Yep. That that authority, that freedom, like that's that's pretty special. It is, man. It. You create how much money you want to make. Yeah. <clears throat> as an employee, you want to make more money than be worth more. Yeah. Like it's pretty. It's, it's so simple. Like 
If you, it's not all about algorithms. No, no. Just, if you want to make up. more money, prove you want to make more money. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's a, a sky. Actually, I don't know if there's a, a limit to how much money you can make being an electrical contractor. I don't know. There, I don't either. There's people out there doing government work. There's people out there doing entire countries. There's, yeah. I it, mean, they're lay, laying new fiber lines between continents. So, I mean, yeah. they're, I don't know. Union workers. And that's the difference. For, okay. So, I'll go real quick on the union, non union stuff. So, okay. I moved here uh, from Colorado. I worked for, uh, I couldn't find a job. I had to start all over again. We wired the hospital. 12 bucks an hour is what I got paid. Whew. Yeah. Coming from, I made $130,000 15 years ago or 20, 20 years ago. Well, however long, it's been a long time. So 18 years ago, let's say a long time ago yeah, in yeah. Colorado, coming here to making $12 an hour. Mm, gut check. Yeah. But it wasn't, a. it's never about the money. Right. 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 It wasn't at the time, you know, being with my kids so yep worked built the hospital then i was like man my buddy said man you could test into the union and i was like shoot i'll test into the union you know yeah. what i mean like I, I know what i'm doing yep like i know the concept. i've made it all the way up yeah so i was like all right cool i'll test into the union so i went and took their test mm-hmm. the union here down south is not as strong as the union up north so okay. they needed people here mm-hmm. um i tested in to me personally, it was a joke. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was like, man, really? Because they literally, if you did, like, I passed it, and they actually had a practical, which was cool. Like Ben and Con do it, three point saddle, four point saddle. Oh, cool! Uh, like it was cool. Ninety. Like I, I bent my name. Yeah. And two sticks of pipe, twenty foot of pipe. I bent Cody. Like. Wow. Yeah, it was kind of cool. I was like, man, is that good enough? He's like, no, you got to do a, a saddle. And I'm like, really? I just literally bent my name. Like, and you want me to bend the saddle? Okay. All right, boom, 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 been the saddle, saddle, but the I tested in, but they were, they were, they needed people, so they were pretty much, if you had somewhat kind of knowledge, mm-hmm. like they would help you pass the thing, you know. So we just bring anybody and everybody. If you 100%. have some some knowledge, we want. You. <coughs> I wanted to work on Fort Campbell. It was okay. the whole deal. But the company I worked for, um, worked in Spring Hill doing. It was a Saturn plant then, but I, I don't know what it is now. But it was a Saturn plant. Um, it was like 30, 30 something dollars an hour. No, it was forty two dollars an hour. But minus your tax or your insurance and all that stuff, and your union dues and all that stuff, yeah, it yeah, ended yeah. up being like twenty six dollars yeah, an hour. Or half. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, like it was a lot. Then I worked at the uh, car plant for a while, and that's eighty miles one way. Mm-hmm. Me and my buddy drive. That's and a it's hike. Lonely. It sucked. Yeah. We worked four tens, which was awesome. Okay. I love four tens. Like, it was cool. So, um, my son, youngest son had a heart problem, and I told the steward, and I was like, man, uh, I need to get transferred to Fort Campbell, because if not, then, you know, I'm going to have to find another job. My yeah, son yeah. has a heart problem. I need to be close by. So, they transferred me, and it's crazy the difference you make on a military base than a non-military base. Hmm. It was like Fifty six dollars an hour or something. The price difference was crazy, and we made like I don't know, like forty something dollars an hour. I'm like, wow, the price was crazy. Yeah, I was like, man, this is awesome. But here's a kicker: the company I worked for went non union. Uh huh. The biggest companies in Tennessee went non union. Okay. Wolf and Travis, Harlan Electric, there's a couple other ones or whatever. I worked for Harlan Electric. Um, the un- the union, they're so like you can't work for a non union company, and they're slow paced. I got threatened when I worked for Harlan when I worked at S- Spring Hill plant because I was running pipe too fast. <laughs> they have a certain the, hourly well, quota, and yeah, you're they do. They do it, like, like yeah. causing problems. Yeah, and it was crazy because. Like, for me, I'm like, I'm there to do the job. You know what I mean? It wasn't about how much, okay, you do a bare minimum, bare minimum, bare minimum. Like, no, dude, I'm there. Like, I want to, I'm there to work. I'm not going to goof off. I'm there to work. Right, so, right. I legit got threatened. This old timer who drove up from Alabama every day in the union in a pink Cadillac. Oh, 
my goodness. Yeah, he stuck up for me because they were like, they said they're going to jump me out in the car lot or in the parking lot. I'm like, because I'm running conduit. You know what I mean? And I was new to the union. So they were like, mm, the new guy sh- yeah. showing me up. Yeah, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. dude, I'm not, it's not about that. I just want to get the, we're here to do a job. Let's do it and get out of here. You know what I mean? But that's a whole mentality with the union. Mm. Well, um, old timer saved my butt. Then I, I got transferred. It was legit for my son's heart. Pro. I didn't get, care about getting jumped. I mean, yeah. I, I'll, I'll take ass whooping as well as I give it. You know what I mean? Yeah, or yeah. butt whooping, sorry. But like, it, it didn't matter, you know? So, um, when I got transferred to Fort Campbell and I made all this money, the company I went worked for got went non-union. Um, I worked for them for like three months afterwards, and for non-union, still had my card, mm-hmm. still paid union dues, did all the stuff they offered us more money per hour, all this stuff. We stick with them. Well, the union was like, you can't work for any non-union company. You need to come sign the books, the union books or mm-hmm. whatever, and. The problem is there was no work, union work. So and they, that's the problem with the unions. They Be- want commitments but no payouts. And- 100 If Ugh. you have no work, you know what I mean? So, of course, if I come sign the, the books, I'm not working. Right. I'm not providing for my family. Yep. You know, so that's, for me, the union's good for some people but not for me because mm. if you're old school, you want to retire soon, the union's awesome mm-hmm. because you work slow. And you have awesome retirement. For me, it's not that. I'm there, still young. I still want to run. Yeah. I still want to do as much as I can. Let me get that 12-hour job done in eight. Yeah, 100%. And go home. Yeah. Get paid for eight, for 12. You know what I mean? Yep, yep. Like, like, let me just do it. So, for me, the difference between union and non-union was, hmm. like, it wasn't for me. They were more about a paycheck than a career. Don't rock the boat. Stay steady. Just do as you're told. Yeah. Like, and I, I don't want that. Yeah. Like, I I want to better myself. I'm not there for just the job. I love what I do. Yeah. My grandpa always said, do something that you do for free. Yeah. That's good, man. And, and I do it for free. You know what I mean? So it's like, it. I don't know. Like, the, the potential money is cr- crazy. Crazy. Endless. Like, legit. I love it. There's never, there, there's no limit. I love it. That's yeah. awesome. I mean, the optimism in the, in the, it's like, it's up to you. Yeah. Make your own destiny. Yeah. And I, I love the mentality around creation versus give me a handout. Like, I, I, I'm even like, dare I even put it on record? Like, I'm a proponent of non minimum wage. Like, like, just go out and make your own future. Yeah. Like, if you show up and you're doing better job than the other guys, you should get paid more. Yeah, I agree. And and that was a part with the union guys. Mm-hmm. Like, I got a guy that's making the same amount of money as I am, mm-hmm. but I'm doing twice the work. Right. Like, exactly. How is that? That's not fair. Reward you know I mean? based upon productivity. 100%. Skill, authority, yeah. whatever it is. But, like, I, I, I am a capitalist in that sense where it just goes, like, make your own future. Yeah. I mean, I guess the, the slang way to say it is, like, make your own bed. Like, like whatever you build is what you're going to get. Yeah. And if you work at like doing electrical work or you work at any aspect of your life, like you want to do better, do being a mechanic and you sh- strive to be better. You're going to be better. Mm-hmm. You, I mean, you got to work at anything you do. Be teachable, learn new things and go get it. The limit. It's cr- well, you know what? Like the sky's the limit on anything. Really? It really is. There's no... I mean, there's a cap to... I mean, I don't know. McDonald's had to start somewhere. Well, that's right. You know so, what I mean? Like, like I, I am an advocate very similar to you. Is like, there's a there's somebody making a million dollars a year in every industry. 100%. Yep. Like, I don't care if that's in... You know, I'm holding up a pen right now. Like, I don't care if it's in pen manufacturing. Yes, this is only a dollar or whatever. But, like, somebody either patented the idea, came up with the packaging, came up with the process, maintaining the company. Like, somebody is making a million dollars a year because of that. Yeah. And I'm totally with you. You show up. You work hard. You have a vision of what you want to create. And it's endless. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cody, this has been a way longer conversation. I, I know, I know, I, I, know, I never man. expected, I know, dude. I yeah. love it, like yeah. getting all the details and the nuances and stuff like that. But like, 
what's your plug that if, if somebody wanted to do business with Buchanan Electric, like where can they find you? How do they get connected? Do you want to be connected? Like, <laughs> well, here's a, um, well, give me a call. All right. Like 931-624-8743. You heard it from the man. Yeah. If I don't answer, leave a text message or voicemail <laughs> yeah. or send me a text. Like I, I will get back to you. Cause, All right. You know. Well, if you're in the Middle Tennessee area and you have electrical needs, like Cody's your man. Yeah. If if I and if I can't do it, I'll point you to somebody who can. I love it. That's yeah. Well, Cody, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I love the conversation, your journey from, I mean, we started with alarm clocks and speakers. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. We yeah. worked all the way from, you know, you went through the the entry level inter, uh, in, internship, inter, journeyman, master process. You did it in multiple states. You've now become a business owner. You've, you employ your children. You have this legacy mindset. Like the, this whole journey has, is one to be marveled i mean it's really cool like to see someone who just had passion for what they enjoyed and what they liked and that not only has turned into a livelihood and income but something much more than that a a, a freedom where yeah. you can choose to do what you want to do and you get to do it with your family and help a lot of people along the way. So yeah. kudos to you, my friend. It's a wonderful conversation. And thanks for coming on today. Yeah, man.